it's always amazing to me how different parts of your life are reflected in those things around you that you either influence or are influencing you. I think of ministry and one of the things that we, uh, my wife and I, and then those that are involved in the ministry with me, have dedicated our life to is the whole concept of one perspective. And we call it one perspective for one reason, because it involves one person. And that person might not be you that's watching right now. It might be somebody that you might affect by something that I said to you in some moment of inspiration from the Holy Spirit, that you went out and did something that was very insignificant to yourself. But for that one other person, it inspired them to either turn to God or acknowledge God in some way that they might not have thought of before or might not have done, except that you, God, gave you that moment to influence and to inspire someone. So what we like to say is that we do it for the one. You know, even if it's just one person walking across the street, little old lady across the street, that uh, if you recorded, if I recorded 10,000s of these videos and it helps just one person, then it's enough. Because keeping that perspective, it doesn't matter how many have seen it or not seen it, because <laughs> if you've been in the ministry very long, you see things grow and you know, well, actually, mainly you just see things grow. It's kind of like weeds, you know, they just keep growing. And sadly, you know, in some ministries, you know, you see churches just grow and grow and grow, and they're never a challenge to divine. You know, they don't seem to go through that normal process where people suddenly go, we disagree, and they leave, you know, and that's probably good for them. But um, all of us in ministry need to have a legitimate, positive reason why we do what we do. We need to know it for ourselves, deep inside, that we need to grasp a hold of this truth of why we do what we do. And for me, I already know. I mean, it'd be a cheap trick or technique to say, well, because the Lord told me to, you know. Oh, sure. You know, Jesus said, go out and, you know, teach all nations. So technically, that covers everything you could possibly imagine. But the point being is that if you get to an actual, real one-on-one -on -one with God, then God will begin to give you a reason inside of why you're doing something. I just had a, a minister of God, you know, just tell me recently that he needed, you know, to do something on his own in a particular way because he needed to share his faith for his faith to grow. Because I understood what he didn't say in so many words, more than he might have known to say. And that is that without him putting out there his faith, his faith doesn't grow. It stays dormant. It, he becomes stagnant and he doesn't learn. And he becomes cudgeled, you know, just kind of like sitting back and then bitterness sets in. And a lot of times people on the internet become that way from informational overload, that they read something and react to it immediately. They just don't think about it, you know, and they, they make that mistake, or they get to the place where they have to have friends, like on Facebook, and then they have to have more friends, and they have to keep extending that friendship out because they get their emotions trapped by this devotion to getting numbers and feeling some spiritual satisfaction from it that unfortunately the enemy uses to kind of like build up a false pride or a false ego and unless you've been in ministry a long time on the internet you don't see it coming until it hits you like one minute you're doing all this ministry work and then suddenly bam your computer crashes and what do you do how do you react to that that'll determine for you where you are in the ministry because you see God doesn't need you God uses you and allows you to participate with them. And at some moment in time, if you're not there, it's going to surprise you, but people don't miss you on the internet. 
you know, you're a 30 second, you have maybe five seconds of attention and that's it. Most people that are doing things on the internet aren't reading or paying too much attention to what they see. They're making quick clicks and it just fly right on by. So it's that instantaneous association of visual identification rather than an actual realization of something that grips them from the spirit of God. But this minister, you know, he, he shared and he needed to go do his thing. And it's like, praise the Lord, go ahead. Now he thinks he has to do it all by himself and alone and, you know, kind of off on a tangent and whatever. He's too proud to ask for help or anything. But that's the way that often people get when they haven't been in ministry very long. They don't realize that they need to step out and fall down a few times and maybe a lot before they start to do things an easier way, a more positive way to work with the body as opposed to being, oh, well, I need to go over here and do this so that I can accomplish this. What we did in our ministry from the very beginning was to say, you know, Lord, there's a missing element out there of people that aren't sharing the everyday life experiences of success, failure, blowing it, saying yes, saying no, saying that's stupid or that's dumb, or saying that that's real. But there's a lot of people that are out there making righteous statements without being real about themselves and their own failures or feelings. And so when God brought me to the ministry in the video side of it, he said, Michael, I want you to be real. You know, I want you to be the same you that you are with me and the same you that you are every day. So a lot of times I've come out here in a robe, a towel, a, I should say a, a robe with a towel in my, drying my hair, not just a towel. Although that's a possibility. But to share the reality of having a personal relationship with God that you meet him in every day and minute of your life. And so in ministry, it's the same thing is that there's a lot of ministers that are in the ministry for the sake of ministry because they're being ministered to as opposed to ministering to others, that they receive back a certain amount of blowback from people liking what they're doing. That's okay up to a point, but at some point in time, you gotta get to the place where you can let it go and then bless someone that is leaving. And so with this bro that, you know, is doing his ministry thing, I blessed him. I said, hey, you know, God bless you. You know, if that's what God wants you to do, go do it. Because when he came, I asked him, I said, look, pray about it and ask God if he wants you to come. And they always say yes. And they always come. And I smile and I bless them and give them freedom to do what they want to do. And when they get off on a tangent, I mention it to them and they usually get a little bit kind of, you know, and then. If they stay, they last for years. If they don't, they tend to go as the Lord leads them. But what we all need to do is to recognize honestly with ourselves why we do something. I know for myself, there is a part of me that goes, wow, look at, look at how many people. And then the other part of me goes, yeah, but they will leave just as soon as they come. And sure enough, Within a day or two, I can see the numbers go down, numbers go up, numbers go down, numbers go up. And frankly, after so many years of it, I really don't care. You know, because my wife knows that the one thing that I do believe in is that even if there was only one, I'd still be making this video. I'd still be sharing these devotionals. I'd still be planning on the, all the networks to reach out in these last days, you know, that we have the opportunity to share Jesus. And if just one person is all that God ever wanted me to reach and to minister to and to touch in some way, then all of this that I've done and shared and sacrificed, and yes, it's a sacrifice, to be there in the Word of God for them, then it's worth it. Because you see, it's only one person that saved me, and that was Jesus. It wasn't all the other people, although it's nice to have them helping you. But Jesus himself is the one who saved me. And because it was just one that saved me, I believe with all my heart, there's one person that you need to minister to. And that when you find that person, you'll know. 
And then you, the rest is just gravy. <laughs> Find balance. Since all this is true, we ought to pay much closer attention than ever to the truths that we have heard, lest in any way we drift past them and slip away. From Hebrews 2.1 when Satan finds people out of balance, he has an inroad to destroy their lives. There are people who get out of balance in everything, from not sleeping to sleeping too much, from cleaning their house, from trying to keep it so clean that nobody can move in it. You have to find balance. Balance keeps your day going right. Satan doesn't much care if you don't do enough of something or if you do too much of it, as long as you don't stay balanced. Take time to examine yourself carefully and ask God to show you how to remain balanced. It always boils down to just simply talking with your father. And if you talk to God throughout your day, then he can keep you in the way that you should go. Because he will give you ministry work and housework and emotional work and physical work and spiritual work and internet work and all this to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, but also to keep it balanced in a way that will not allow for you to become extremist in getting carried away on the internet and not carried about the Father who is the one you're supposed to be getting to know more, not just trying to tell someone else about what religion you have or what you've learned so far. It's more about, really, you getting to know Him as opposed to you telling someone else. It's funny, but it's true, because as you get closer to knowing Him, you automatically feel someone else. It's just a spiritual reality. It's, it's the way it works. Because if you've got it turned around the other way, where you're trying to tell other people, and you don't know that much, I'm sorry. God would rather you spend time with Him than try to talk about someone you don't know. <laughs>